Welcome back. Before I get to the UVC G3 videos this evening, I wanted to do a little bit of a preview of DNSfilter.com. You've heard, heard me talk about it for commercial DNS filtering. This is what I am switching all of my open DNS clients to. And DNS filter, if you go on over to their website, https colon slash slash dnsfilter.com, they are in beta. But you can sign up, and I uh, uh, email back and forth with Ken, one of the owners over there. He's a terrific guy. And real quick, before we sign in, let's take a look at their features. The interface does look this, this clean. You'll see it here in a few minutes. They do have a uh, kind of a global network, and the way it's set up is they don't have one point of failure, and they can scale quickly and easily. The content filtering is fantastic. You'll get a, a glimpse of that. The threat protection, I really like this. They'll, I'll show you this screen. They you can uh, block against spyware and virus infected sites, proxy sites. Custom block page, you can upload your own logo and then change the email address of the network administrator. And the reporting, uh, back to management liking the, the color charts and bar graphs and pie graphs and all that, the reporting does look like this. And coming soon, I did talk to Ken about this, and they are launching in early July. And I believe he said July 1st. He said I could quote him. And all of these features should be available at the time of launch. So one more quick thing. They do have the DNS servers listed at the bottom of their site. But if they don't recognize an IP that the requests are coming from, it will reject it. I have tried this. So let's hop into an account and I'll show you the interface. When you sign up, you'll get an, a confirmation email, email just like many other services today. And the first thing they want us to do is they want us to add a network. And you can put an address in. If you put an address in, then it is going to actually display on a Google map. So when you have all of your locations and you have the addresses, when you're looking at the overview, it's got a little pin on the map. It's, it's pretty sweet. I'm not going to put, I'm not going to put an address in here. Scroll down. So if we want to customize that, that block page, we can use the default appearance, which is that DNS filter page you saw, or we can uncheck this. We can put, you know, the email in here, and then we can upload that logo. Then the IP information, this is where right now, if you have a static IP or an IP that doesn't change, you would add the IP and save it. That's how they know who the the queries are coming from and how to attribute this to your account. <clears throat> and you can see that dynamic DNS support, that dynamic DNS support using DynDNS and DNSOmatic.com host names are coming soon. And they do want to know if you're using a different dynamic host name provider, please contact us. So they are very willing to work with people. I'm going to show you the pricing once we take a look at this interface. Because that's, I love it when company, companies use the word disruptive or disruptively, but they mean it and they know what, what it means. So like Ubiquity, they're disruptive. DNS filter is going to be disruptive in this space as well. So let's look at our overview. And you can, if you've got multiple sites and you click this drop down, it'll list all of your sites here. So you can take a global snapshot or you can zoom in on a particular network. So I didn't give it any map information. So you can see that the Google map is just kind of defaulted wherever Google Maps defaults somewhere out here in the South Pacific Ocean. You can see that we have one network that we're filtering, but one is inactive. They are not seeing any queries come from that. But when you do start getting traffic flowing to them, then all of this data starts populating. We can go over here to our policies and we can add a policy.
and we'll save that. And now we can come in here and we can look at the categories and to disallow one of these cat categories, you just click on it. So, and if you hover the mouse over the category, you will see where uh, you get a little description. So I usually block pro proxy and filter avoidance because we're trying to make it as difficult as possible for people to do things that we don't want them to do. And then I block adult content. So that's when we're just looking at porn. Now, some places will block gambling, illegal content, alcohol and tobacco, dating and personal. Every place that does content filtering is a little different. So your mileage may vary. Save that. And you can see the policy porn filter successfully updated. Go over here to security. This is that security list I was telling you about. So we can tell it to go ahead and just block malware sites, phishing sites, proxy sites, spyware sites, translation sites, and virus infected sites and save that. We can come over here and we can have sites whitelisted. So I, one of my sites um, that we put it on, it, roblox.com for some reason was uh, blocked just with the adult content blocked, but it's the kids game site. So we whitelisted it. So you can do um, custom IPs and I don't have anything selected here and I haven't really played with this feature in depth yet, but at some point I'm, I'm sure I will. Then there's a blacklist so you can come in here and you can add domains that no matter what, if it's in this blacklist, it will always be blacklisted. So then what you do is you come into the network after you've created your policy, and you can create many different policies, and you attribute a policy to the network, and, and that's it. And then you configure your network and your clients to use the DNS servers for DNS filter, and things will start coming through on the reporting. So you can see we've got total requests, queries per second, most active networks, top domains, and then billing. And you can see this is zero, 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 zero. So let's go ahead and log out. And we're going to go back to the DNS filter main site. Because this is what I want to show you. You can read all of the stuff uh, on their site, you know, DNS filters, a cloud delivered DNS based content filtering. By the way, I'm not a huge cloud fan, but I believe that this is one application that is perfect for the cloud. It's absolutely perfect. So let's scroll down. You can you can read everything. We we kind of they kind of touch on everything we did inside of the application itself. But here is how they bill. So you can look at the cost comparisons. The green checks are the products or the services that you get, and then the annual cost per network is at the bottom. Now, you see that this is not the cheapest, but Dyn DNS, and I did try to sign up for Dyn DNS. Sure, you can get their web filtering for free, but to do that, you have to pay for a premium DynDNS.com account. So I didn't proceed. The DNS filter provides all, all of this, and I will tell you that I, I have a client on OpenDNS and I'm switching them. This $240, even for a small network, even 10 people, even 5 people, this $240, I think that the guys at DNSfilter.com were very fair to OpenDNS because I can tell you that I have a client who has 10 users and we were looking at $900 a year. If I'm going to pay $900 a year, I might as well put a Barracuda box in. Just put in a dedicated box dedicated piece of hardware and and pay, I don't know, a couple extra hundred bucks and then have Barracuda at your beck and call for support. The Barracuda support is good, but I will tell you that DNS filter, every time I've sent an email to Ken or even used the contact us form, they have almost immediately contacted me back within, I will say, 24 business hours, which I think is very acceptable. Considering that I'm using the service for free right now, and I'm beta testing, and I know they have other beta testers. So let's look at the pricing real quick before we wrap this up. 
So they have, it's $1 per 200,000 requests per month with a $5 minimum. So it's only going to cost you $5 a month for a million requests. That's pretty cheap. I think probably most, most services are going to get away with this $5 a month minimum. So, and they give you some estimated costs down here, like 10 business users is going to be $10 a month. I think they might be estimating estimating high depending on your company's policies. There's some companies that don't allow you know, internet except on lunch breaks or breaks. So head on over to dnsfilter.com, sign up for the beta, try it out. You know, leave me your feedback. Leave, leave Ken and his crew some feedback. They are always looking for that feedback. But if you like the video, please give a thumbs up. Please subscribe, and we'll see you at the UVC G3 demo.